Hi there, good day. My name is Alistair Albert and I'm welcoming you to episode two of the Baseline to Baseline podcast series. Um, of course, I'm here, your host, Alistair Albert, here to talk NBA basketball with you. Um, and, you know, just kind of just talk about a few things that have happened over the last couple of days and weeks since our last episode, episode one. If you did miss episode one, you know, you're very naughty. You need to go check it out and see us on our YouTube page, uh, Baseline to Baseline. Um, you know, like and subscribe. You could check it out on Facebook. Um, same baseline to baseline uh, username. Check us out on Instagram, baseline to baseline UK, or Twitter uh, at B2B underscore UK. So we have uh, loads of different platforms and channels where you can kind of check out the episode. So if you missed episode one with my boy Jan Seafley, go check that out. But we're here to bring you episode two. Uh, where we're going to discuss a few things. And of course, the NBA now has resumed in the bubble in Orlando. Uh, so, you know, we're going to, um, you know, talk about a few things since the resumption of the NBA season. And of course, well, a few things, little things changed around. So we have a few jerseys on the, on the back of the chair here, just as a little uh, decoration sort of thing. We've got a new mic. So hopefully the audio is a lot better and crisper in this episode. And well, for this episode, I'm going to be riding solo. So no guests today, but we're just going to talk about a few things that we've noticed um, over the last couple of days since um, episode one. So like I said, if you haven't seen episode one, go on to our YouTube channel and other places and just kind of check it out. It was the pilot episode, really short one. This one is going to be slightly longer. We have a couple more topics to discuss, but you know, like we said, hope you like. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be looking down a little bit at a topic sheet that I've kind of just printed out just to kind of keep me on track for a few things so if i do uh, glance down you know don't take any issue of it we're just kind of trying to stay on track sort of thing so first thing i'd like to get into really is the bubble you know the nba bubble so far of course the league resumed play on july 30th with two games on its slate and then you know we've up to this point now um, August 7th, where we've had uh, multiple games and, you know, a lot of different reactions to um, the play so far. And, um, you know, it's been really interesting because I think many of us have missed the NBA and just missed sporting activity on its own. But to have the NBA back globally, I think, you know, there are loads of fans who are just really enjoying the resumption of play. And of course, there are no fans in the stadium, but, you know, the virtual experience that um, the NBA has kind of concocted with Michelob Ultra, their new base sponsor to bring this virtual reality screen where you have fans from all over the place cheering on their teams, you know, is really cool. And I think for the NBA, this has been really successful because all teams who have kind of come in so far and all their you know players have been in in orlando in this bubble system no one could go in or out where you know, unless they have permission but once you're coming back in you have to quarantine for a couple of few day, a couple of days um you know get consecutive tests being negative for coronavirus and then you know you then you could join your team um, since the bubble has started, no one has tested positive, positive for coronavirus. So the NBA and Adam Silver, like everyone has been saying, has done a really good job. Um, whereas with other professional sporting leagues, there's been a bit of a difficult undertaking trying to keep people healthy and COVID free. So we have the NFL where I think most of you guys who follow that, if you do, would have noticed that loads of different teams have lots of play, lots of players opting out of the season, either because of positive coronavirus um, test results or just concerns over everything. And of course, we have the Black Lives Matter movement where some athletes have decided to sit out to kind of pay you know, more attention to that, which of course is their right. And, you know, it's definitely definitely something that we all support in that sort of way. But, you know, the NFL, you know, loads of guys have been opting out and there have been loads of um, teams who have had COVID ravage their locker rooms. And of course, it's a lot more difficult. You have an NFL team that uh, has a 53-man active roster, um, which it just means more people to test. Um, baseball, the same. There's been a few clubhouses that have had COVID kind of go through their locker rooms. And, you know, with a, a team that's about 25, 26 active players, um, managers and everyone else, it's a lot difficult. Whereas in the NBA, there's only 15 players that you need to account for. Um, so it's just a, a lot less testing to do and a lot, uh, a lot more rigorous, um, you know, 
things in place to kind of keep the, keep the players safe. So the bubble so far, I think, has been really successful and kind of been a really good example of how you could do things with a certain level of organization and planning. And of course, the numbers of the teams really do help because I think each team is probably taking around 50-something um, staff, including players, to the bubble. So there's just less people to test and less instances of the coronavirus um, affecting locker rooms and that sort of stuff so so far so it's been what a couple of weeks the nba has kind of been covid free and you know compared to to other other leagues you know the nba has done phenomenally based on that and of course we have these seeding games going on which is a bit dif- uh, different from what we used to where you have an 82 regular season game but since of course the, the season has started back um, adam silver and his scheduling team have kind of constructed these seeding games between 22 NBA teams, um, you know, all vying for playoff spots, and each team gets to play eight games against their 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 foes, their their peers in the NBA. And you know, it's been really interesting because only eight teams get into the playoffs as you as per usual. But there's going to be these playing tournaments where the uh, the eighth and ninth seed, seeds in each conference. Um, you know, might have to play against each other and the ninth seed has to win two games consecutively to kind of get into the playoffs. But that's only if they're eligible uh, to get into those playing games where um, the ninth seed has to be within four games difference um, in their record to be able to be eligible for that playing tournament. And I think <laughs> in the East, it doesn't look like the Wizards are going to get a chance because they are already loads of games out of the eighth seed over those four games and um, I think they've lost all their games so far as well so in the the, the bubble so I don't think you could, you need to worry about the East everyone is all locked in and set uh, based on you know the games played so far and in the West you know it's a little more competitive you have some teams that are um, you know vying for a little more uh you know, trying to get there, trying to get to that eighth seed. And we have Portland and the New Orleans Pelicans, uh, San Antonio Spurs and Phoenix Suns, you know, trying to get to that eighth seed where the Memphis Grizzlies are right now. And it's it's just ridiculous, you know, the, the, the com- competition. And there's probably like two games between everyone as they try to get into that eighth, eighth spot uh, in the Western Conference. So, you know, the bubble in terms of all of this has worked really good. Um, you know, there's been this um, warning system that Adam Silver has put in place where players could kind of tell and on other players, you know, there's this hotline people could call <laughs> to, you know, to, I suppose, snitch on other players, you know, who are not following the, the COVID and health and safety um, regulations properly. So Dwight Howard has kind of felt like, you know, he's been picked on because he hadn't been wearing a mask a couple of times and people kind of told on him and the league warned him. So, you know, it suggests, um, you know, behavior in the bubble. And I think that's a good thing because, you know, everyone's health is at risk. And, you know, if someone is seeing someone not doing the right thing, um, you know, whether they talk to them directly or have the league do it, it's, you know, it's a good thing because you don't want to put other people at risk. We have coaches who are 60, 70 plus years old and they're in the vulnerable category. So, um, you know, I think everything that they've put in place in terms of, um, you know, just the schedule, the seeding games, um, the hotline, you know, people might not like being snitched on, but, you know, it's all for a good reason. Um, So the bubble so far to me gets a thumbs up, double thumbs up, because, you know, Orlando has done it really well. And, um, you know, Disney, ESPN, the partners that have put this thing together, um, you know, they've thought everything out and it seems to be working really, really well. So, of course, like we said, the bubble has resumed um, or the bubble has popped. You know, games have resumed. And, you know, what I would like to discuss here next are what I think are the surprises of the NBA bubble so far. And we have a number of teams who have just played exceptionally well since, you know, the the league has resumed. And, of course, it's been a a major disruption for the NBA because of the, the shutdown due to the coronavirus. But some teams have kind of stood out so far and have some really good records so we have the Suns who are one of the only undefeated teams left there are two undefeated teams since the bubble has has started and the Suns are one of them at 4-0 we have the Raptors the defending champions who are now 3-0 
Um, the Blazers, you know, they're fighting for that eighth spot and they're fighting hard. They're now three and one um, so far in the bubble. The Pacers were also an undefeated team, but they had a really strong battle with the Suns last night where they lost and now they're now three and one. And also the Rockets. The Rockets have, have kind of done really well and they are now three and one in the NBA bubble. So these teams so far are the ones who have stood out and have kind of been the surprises to me so so far, but really the Suns, um, Monty Williams and Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, um, Cameron Payne, you know, these guys have really played really, really well, putting the team on their back and trying to, you know, salvage the rest of the season and try to push themselves into that eighth spot. And I think they're like now two games out of that a spot and with the grizzlies playing as badly as they, as they have um they you know they're they're losing their mojo jamarant is trying to do too much jaron jackson jr has now gotten injured and is out for the rest of the season the team is kind of floundering and, and trying to find itself um in the bubble so you know the the suns just as much as em- as anyone else you know have a really good chance of um, getting into the playoffs and you know it's just really good to see that after such a a, a horrible season where you know they were so inconsistent DeAndre Ayton himself was injured for a little while um, and you know they're kind of really getting things together and I think I heard on one of these other shows where they said that some of these players are actually better when they're in you know, closed gyms and just scrimmaging and they play a lot better. You hear that all the time where players play so much better at practice rather than they do um, on the court. And I think this is probably one of the cases where these young guys this um, on the Phoenix Suns are probably um, just more confident because they don't have to contend with crowd noise and jeering and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, the Suns are playing exceptionally well. I'm just opening up a spreadsheet that I have here with uh, the records and everything. So yeah, the, the Suns are now 4-0 and, you know, they've beaten some quality teams. They've beaten, um, well, <laughs> quality, I say, the Wizards are, are really struggling. So let's let's cast them out. But, you know, they're part of the 4-0 as to why the, the, the Suns have gone, um, you know, perfect so far in the bubble. So they've beaten the Wizards, they've beaten the Mavericks, you know, they've beaten the Clippers with Devin Booker putting up a crazy fallaway shot over Kawhi Leonard and Paul George um, to secure that victory. And they beat the Pacers last night, last night like I said. So, you know, the, the Suns are, are 4-0 in this um, resumption of the season with eight more games to go. And, you know, they've, they've, they've been good. You know, if, if the NBA had to institute an MVP of the bubble, you know, Devin Booker is right up there. You know, he's he's been playing really, really well. The defending champs, Toronto Raptors. Yes, they've also uh, are the only undefeated team in the bubble and they've played some really good competition as well, beating the Lakers, uh, the Miami Heat, and also the Orlando Magic, who are a very scrappy team in the East, um, although they um, hold the eighth seed in the East at the moment. They're, you know... You know, they're, they're a very scrappy team and any Steve Clifford coach team is going to be really scrappy and really difficult to get by. So, um, you know, the Toronto Raptors are doing what they're supposed to do. And Nick Nurse, as we've seen, has has been an exceptional coach, you know, putting the guys in really good positions. Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet. Um, you know, we have guys like Chris Boucher coming off of the bench, you know, which I will shout out, you know, as someone who was born in St. Lucia, the country where I'm from. And, you know, he's playing exceptionally well coming off the bench, playing a really solid role. Um, you know, the, the, the Raptors are doing really, really good. Um, and, of course, the Blazers, like I mentioned, um, you know, there was some inconsistency as the year started off with some injuries with McCollum and, um, you know, Carmelo Anthony coming on to the team a little late. But the Portland Trail Blazers have been amazing coming in and they've um, had some really good battles and they're now three and one in the bubble you know so one of the teams with just one loss in the four games that have been played in the bubble so far and um, you know they're fighting they're just a half game behind the Memphis Grizzlies who have lost all their games in the bubble so far and are in danger of losing that eighth spot so we have um, with four games left to go you know, we could see a situation where 
Portland jumps into the eighth seed and you know Memphis probably completely out and it could be probably over be overtaken by the San Antonio Spurs or the Phoenix Suns like we mentioned or uh, the New Orleans Pelican, Pelicans who are having a, a bit of a, a hard time in the bubble to be quite honest um, but you know Memphis you know they're right on that line you know if you want to use a football analogy they're on that line of of relegation where they could be out of the playoff um, picture really quickly in those last four games if they don't get their act together really soon and um, you know so these were my teams which I think were really positive surprises so far um, oh yeah we have the last two the Pacers and the Rockets all right the Pacers man another person who you could pa- kind of probably put in as a bubble MVP so far has been TJ Warren, um, you know, coming from Phoenix and he has been a dynamo. He's been on fire, shooting lights out. And, you know, the Pacers have beaten so far the 76ers, the Wizards and the Magic and then losing to the Suns last night, like we said, in a really um, tough battle. But, you know, they're still right there in it. And, you know, they had a really good season. Um, before the, the shutdown happening, yes, um, Victor, Victor Oladipo was injured, but you know they've they've just continued to go along, and they're doing all of this winning in the bubble without Demont- Demontis Sabonis, who's who's still injured and hasn't really joined the team playing as yet. But you know the Indiana Pacers are well coached, and you know they're doing their thing. The Rockets, um, a lot of people have them as a bit of a dark horse in the West and in the playoffs this year. And, um, you know, you have two former MVPs in James Harden and Russell Westbrook pushing this team and propelling them, you know, you know, as as hard as they can. And of course, everyone wonders, you know, how they're going to do in the playoffs because of their lack of size, getting rid of Clint Capella um, at the, the, the middle of the season, just around the All-Star break. And, you know, you wonder what's going to happen that one of the first games they played in the bubble where I think it was a scrimmage. I don't think it was one of the actual formal bubble games, but they ended up playing the Denver Nuggets and the Denver Nuggets just had everyone over six, eight on their team with Nikola Jokic, who's seven foot, whatever, playing point guard, you know? So you, you just kind of try to figure out how the hell are the Rockets going to kind of get past the size def- deficit that they have in the bubble and in the playoffs but you know they've played really well they've played three games so far and probably have the three most impressive wins of anyone in the bubble so far so they've won against the Mavericks the Bucks and the Lakers and losing one game to the Blazers who are just blazing hot right now themselves so you know the the Houston Rockets have acquitted themselves really well so far in the four games in the bubble and you know they can be a very you know, difficult team to face, you know, in the first round. So right now they sit at um, uh, number six. So they possibly could play the Denver Nuggets in uh, the first round of the playoffs, which would be really interesting, uh, um, who have the third seed. So, you know, just look out for the Rockets. Let's see what what they have to do and what else they can bring for the last four games in in the bubble. But, you know, the Rockets are really pushing. So, so these are my positive surprises so far, but of course we have on the flip side, these other surprises that, you know, that it's just not panning out at the moment. And we have a couple of teams who are just really underperforming. So we have first off the Memphis Grizzlies, you know, the, before the shutdown, the Grizzlies were just one of those grit and grind reincarnate teams. You know, they, they didn't have the, the Mike Conley, Mark Gasol, Tony Allen type of vibe to them. They were just this new age, really fast paced, you know, scrappy team with that grit and grind element to them. But they, they've, they've just lost their mojo, man. They've, they've come out and just hit stinkers every single game that they've played in the bubble so far. So in four games played in the bubble so far, they've lost all four and they've lost to the Blazers, the Spurs, the Pelicans and the Jazz. And, you know, that game they lost to the Pelicans was was tough because, you know, it, it you know, this one of the teams that are fighting to get into that last playoff spot. And also, you know, in fact, all of the teams, the Blazers, the Spurs and Pelicans, you know, they're trying to overthrow the, 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 the Memphis Grizzlies for that eighth seed. And they, they haven't won any of those games against those teams. So they've put themselves in a really difficult position to try to get past. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see, you know, what these guys can do the rest of the way. But they have 
to scrap because right now, like I said, they're only a half game above the Portland Trailblazers and, you know, they, they're struggling. They're struggling and they could be outside looking in really quickly um, with the last four games coming up. So we have the Grizzlies and then we have the Pelicans. The Pelicans have... I don't know what's going on with them. You know, they're a super talented squad with, you know, lots of size and lots of versatility, but they're just not playing up to their potential. And, you know, we'll come to that a little later where it comes to coaching, but you have Zion Williamson who didn't start out, start out in the bubble, um, you know, as all the other players on the team, you know, he was out for a little while dealing with a family issue, I believe it was, and he's come back in and he's been on a minutes restriction. And that's kind of really curtailed their productivity because Zion is a big, hefty guy who just blows by everyone and gets his way to the rim and, you know, puts up points really efficiently and really really quickly. Most of his games, when you look at the box score, he's like 24 points in like 20 minutes. And he's putting up really good, impactful stats for the Pelicans. But Alvin Gentry has taken the tact of not playing him down the stretch to preserve him fair enough but you know if they're going to be in the bubble trying to make the playoffs they need to use Zion because you know he's developed some really quick and good chemistry with Lonzo Ball their point guard Um, you know half court alley-oops you know coming left and right and you know these guys could play together and they need Zion on the court Um, Brandon Ingram is trying his best you know to continue his all-star form um, and you know push the team as far as it could go but he is still learning how to be a leader. Drew Holiday, of course, is very solid. You know, he's always been, you know, um, someone you could rely on as a, as, a, as, a, as a point guard to run your team, former all-star who knows what, what he's about. J.J. Redick coming off the bench, you know, he's been shooting lights out. Um, but, you know, the Pelicans are just not putting it together. And that could be a function of coaching just not doing the right thing. You know, Alvin Gentry looks all good with his mask on in the bubble, but I don't know if the mask is kind of preventing his his schemes from getting out really clearly to the guys because, you know, it's just not translating into wins. So um, they've won one game in the bu- bubble so far. Like we said, they've, they've beaten the Grizzlies, which was a really important victory for them to get. But then they've lost to the Jazz, the Clippers, and the Kings. You know, all very difficult teams and all within this bubble as well but um you know if the pelicans want to kind of get into um the eighth spot and leapfrog the spurs the trailblazers and the grizzlies they have to play a lot better in these last four games and they'll be one of these teams who would be needing help from those who are above them you know and hoping that the blazers and the spurs and grizzlies lose matches and they win you know, to help them get into that spot. So the Pelicans are in trouble, man. They're in trouble. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with them, but, you know, we'll see as, as the bubble moves on. Um, the next three teams, I think, have been disappointing because, you know, we expect so much more from them. Um, the Lakers, the Los Angeles Lakers, they have been, they've played five games so, so far in the bubble. I think the team who have played, they are the team who have played the most games in the bubble so far, and you know, expectedly because they're like the most popular team. So the schedulers have kind of put them in, you know, quite a lot. And they've lost games to the Clippers and Jazz, but all no, they've sorry, they've won games against the Clippers and Jazz. The Clippers game, of course, being one of the first ones in the bubble. And then they've lost to the Raptors, the Thunder, and Houston. You know, all three really good teams, you know, by any account this year as well. Um, But, you know, in the bubble right now, you know, you're kind of wondering, is this something that we need to worry about? Um, You know, whoever Lakers fans are, and you know, is there a cause for concern with them losing three games to, you know, three really good playoff teams? Um, You know, the Raptors and, and Houston, you expect, you know, that level of trouble. Did you think you'd, they'd lose to the Thunder? I'm not too sure, but, you know, the Thunder have done really well this year, you know, over overachieving or, you know, and, and going further than many expectations for them this season. So this is a really good team as well. But the, the Los Angeles Lakers, they just seem a bit off. And their inefficiency uh, in particular is what's been really hurting them. I think I saw a stat that was shared by a friend of mine on WhatsApp that says that, you know, they're 22nd, they're last 
out of the 22 teams in the bubble, they're 22nd in, in many major uh, statistical categories in terms of field goal efficiency, um, rebounds, and, and some of the stats. I'll, I'll put that up for you guys to see. Um, a tweet coming from one of the NBA analysts, I think it was Tim Reynolds. And, you know, the, the, the Lakers aren't, aren't, aren't doing really well right now. And whilst they've beaten, you know, two really good teams in the Clippers and Jazz, you know, they've then... It's two, two steps forward, three steps back, literally. Um, and now we have LeBron being injured with a groin injury at the moment. And is it the same groin injury that kept him out of last year, you know, towards the end of the season where they, they, they just plummeted from the fourth seed all the way out of the, out to the, out of the playoffs? Um, is that the same groin injury? And for LeBron James at 35, 36 years old in his 17th season, a groin injury is not what Lakers fans would want to hear right now. Um, so it's it's a tough one. The Lakers, you know, still have some proving to do. And Anthony Davis on his own has just shown to be, you know, what he was when he was with the New Orleans Pelicans, being a really good superstar who just can't provide wins for his team on his own. Um, you know, and, you know, they need LeBron to be there. So if he's injured or hobbled in any sort of way, the Los Angeles Lakers are going to be in trouble. So these are one of my surprise teams on the negative side, you know, and, and it's one of those teams you expect a little more from. The next one up is is the Clippers. Um, the Clippers have been a bit inconsistent as well. You have a, a, a few situations where some players are not in the bubble with them. So we had Montrez Harrell, who still hasn't played or suited up for them in the bubble. And Lou Williams, who only played the last game, I believe, um, after... <laughs> visiting the gentleman's establishment was in Orlando <laughs> and having to quarantine for the next 10 days because of because of that. Um, but, you know, Doc Rivers has always said that this team is kind of built for the playoffs. But because there's so many new guys on that team and chemistry still having to be developed, you know, playing so inconsistency, inconsistently as well is probably not the best thing for the Clippers at this time. So they've played four games, won two, lost two. They have won two games against the Pelicans and the Mavericks and lost to the Lakers and Suns. Um, you know, so the, the, the quality of games that they've played and, and you know, the way the wins and losses have come have been a bit disturbing uh, for the Clippers as well. And Kawhi Leonard has not looked like an MVP candidate or finals MVP kind of caliber player at this moment he's, he just looks like a, an all-star who's just trying to find his feet and of course you know when the playoffs start you know he'll kind of kick in but we need it we need him to be better um on that team so this is one of the disappointing teams at the moment and also the bucks you know the bucks have been a bit um wishy-washy the last couple of days um in the bubble the four games they've played so far they have won against the celtics and who did they play last night? I can't remember the Celtics and someone else. And then they lost to the Rockets and the Nets. Um, you know, losing to the Nets, that was a wow <laughs> moment for many people. And, you know, it was a really close game um, with Karis Levert and, you know, some of the players, Justin Anderson and some of the guys kind of really playing up to, up to scratch. NBA caliber um, you know, good to kind of beat the MVP and his really strong um, East leading team. So the Milwaukee Bucks have been, you know, up and down. And of course, can we really blame these teams for playing so inconsistently? Not really. You know, this is the first time they're playing in August, a, te a season which has been shut down and restarted. No team has home team advantage. Everyone's playing in the same location. There's a lot of things for them to contend with in this new bubble situation. But, you know, you know, when the bright lights come on, you expect them to play. So um, these are not the, the results you expect from the Lakers, the Clippers and Bucks. But, you know, everyone's trying to do their best. And, you know, when the playoffs start in a couple of weeks, we, we will see who's who. You know, the, the men will be separated from the boys then. All right. So these were the surprises, positive and negative so far. And um, the next thing I kind of want to get into, you know, that has a really impact, a, a big impact on team and will continue to have an impact on teams moving forward are injuries. Now, as we know, injuries are, are something that could happen at any point in time. 
during the regular season or the playoffs and can have a catastrophic um, effect on teams when they when they happen. You know, case in point, the Golden State Warriors last year in the finals who ended up losing Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson at in an inopportune time, allowing for the Raptors to you know to take advantage and win that championship. And you know, you, I'm not going to take anything away from the Raptors; they deserved that chip. But, you know, we know if, you know, the Warriors were fully healthy and Kevin Durant was 100%, we don't know how that series would go. It, it probably it probably would have been the Warriors winning, so we don't know. So injuries at this point in the season, losing players for the rest of this, the time, it's, 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 it's difficult. Um, and we have three notable injuries happening over the last couple of days in the bubble that you probably need to take notice of. And we have Jaron Jackson Jr., excuse me, um, who we we seen play really well in the bl- bubble for the last for the first three games the um the memphis grizzlies played um you know providing that big man defense you know transition defense um and you know hitting threes um you know just being another player on jamaran's side you know who could fill the lanes and run the run the lanes fill up the post and you know, get alley oops, shoot freeze and stuff, and you know, produce for the Grizzlies to keep them up and afloat in the playoff picture. But him going down for the rest of the year is um, it's got to hurt. It's got to hurt the Grizzlies, and it's something that you know they they got to watch really really closely and see who else steps up. So we have guys like um, uh, Brandon Clark, um, Kyle Anderson. You know, the other the big guys that. Um, they they have on that team. They they need to step up because they're going down and they're going down fast. Like I said, they've lost all four games in the bubble so far, and losing Jaron Jackson at this point is tough. You know, there's no ele- no ability for them to bring any more guys in. So you know they have to fight with what they have. And Ja Morant, if he wants to win the Rookie of the Year this year, which he probably will, you know, by all accounts, he's going to be the winner of the Rookie of the Year trophy this year. If he could pull out some superhuman, super heroic games, these last four games to keep them in the playoff picture, you know, he would have earned that trophy 10 times over. So look out for what's going to happen with the Memphis Grizzlies. Jaron Jackson going down was really difficult. Um, We have Ben Simmons, you know, on the Philadelphia 76ers, who have just been (laughs) a team that has just been unlucky. They've just had injuries and, you know, from the, the the trust the process days where, you know, they kept on losing and gathering draft picks, um, you know, trying to get past um, themselves and, you know, st- trying to get over themselves. They kept tripping themselves over, over and over each time. And now they're at a point of a little bit of success. And now, you know, these injuries just come in at the wrong time. So Ben Simmons is now out and, you know, he's out indefinitely, no timeline placed on when he would return and he had just been shifted by Brett Brown their head coach uh, to the power forward spot so he was no longer playing point guard we had Shake Milton who has been brought in to man that um, point guard position and Ben Simmons in the dunker spot at the power forward playing alongside Joel Embiid in the post um, you know and he was starting to, to kind of feel his way out you know with that position and, and being that impact player who could who could pass you know that was going to be really key for them and him going out at this point in the bubble is is going to be very detrimental for the Philadelphia 76ers you have Tobias Harris of course who's trying to keep up um, and keep the guys afloat Joel Embiid he doesn't really look himself he doesn't look like the confident trust the process guy anymore Joel Embiid seems to be struggling a little bit and um you know the 76ers could be in trouble if you know Ben Simmons cannot come back and Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris and Al Horford and everyone else you know don't pick up the slack they'll be in trouble LeBron as we mentioned also an injured player who just had this groin injury but we don't know if that was just resting him resting and an aging body and not playing the last game against the Rockets um but you know lebron being injured at any point in the season as we seen last year is really bad for the lakers so you know all the lakers fans who are actually still lakers fans with lebron being on the team you know have cause to be concerned um with lebron 
potentially being injured. So we'll, we'll kind of monitor that situation and see what's going on with him um, in, in Los Angeles. And hopefully, you know, he'll come back because I think the playoffs will just not be great if LeBron is not in. You know, the Lakers are, they've clinched the first the first seed in the West, you know, the best team in the West. And, you know, you want to see that team go through healthy, um, you know, although they're missing a couple of players, Rondo, who is injured as well, you know, provides such a steady veteran presence controlling that team at the point guard spot and he's out and he'll be back really soon I think I think he's probably into his third week out of six um, rehabbing an injury to his thumb so hopefully Rondo will be back soon hopefully LeBron will be back soon Avery Bradley of course decided to sit out um, playing in the bubble so you know they're already deficient there so you can't really for the Lakers sake you, you really have to hope that you know they can stay healthy because if not they're going to be in problems so right so in terms of surprises so far i'm kind of going to jump back into the surprise section the person i think i really want to call out apart from tj warren who has been phenomenal you know he's he shot he shot great and you know all the guys who i play fantasy basketball with you know i i, do, I can't remember who had tj warren on his team but he had a really good season with Victor Oladipo being out for a long time. And in the bubble, he's in the bubble so far, he's probably the MVP out of the four games that have been played because he's putting up almost 40 points per game in the four, four, um, four games that have been played. Of course, the outlier being the 53-point game that he had um, over the Sixers, I believe. Let's see. Yes, it was the Sixers that he put up that 50-burger on, <laughs> um, you know, when the when the when this the game started and you know he's probably been the MVP so far and probably should be the person I highlight here as a surprise um for me. But the standout player I think I want to call out has been Carmelo Anthony. Um you know and that's why I have this Blazers jersey right here next to me because um you know his jersey double zero Carmelo Anthony you know new face old face in a new place. Um, but, you know, he's had a little struggle trying to get back into the flow of the NBA after not being on a team for about a year and a half. The Blazers gave him a chance. He came in, he put up points, you know, got into a starting spot. He didn't have to come up off the bench. He got that respect from Terry Stotts, the head coach. And, you know, he's he's done really well. He's come back. I think anyone who's seen pictures of Carmelo Anthony since this restart of the NBA was amazed you know he looked like he was a, he was like a double act for Trevor Ariza he was as thin as Trevor Ariza and everyone who knows Carmelo Anthony you know he was this bruiser you know big bodied wide bodied guy who he kind of looked not as pudgy but he kind of looked a little bit like Paul Pierce he was big and you know he bullied bullied his way in in under the rim and you know he's he's lost the weight he's quicker on his feet he's trying to play defense he's shooting the three ball really really well a catch and shoot and you know he has provided the blazers the spark that they needed to try to get back in to the playoff picture and of course the blazers were the, the in the western conference finals last year so to be out of the playoff picture um this year would be a, a major disappointment but the one person who could get them back in um, you know, and has been playing really well, has been Carmelo Anthony. So I wanted to kind of highlight him today here because for the regular season so far, I'm going to look down at my paper here. He's averaged so far 15.3 points per game, 6.3 rebounds and 1.5 steals per game. And his bubble start stats are a little lower. Um, you know, granted the last game that they played, he didn't put up many good stats. Um, it was kind of low across the board, but in the bubble so far, he's averaging 14 points a game, 6.5 rebounds, so just over the 6.3 in the regular season. His assist numbers are not great. <laughs> Carmelo Anthony doesn't pass the ball. He gets it and he shoots it. So 0 0.75 <laughs> assists per game. But the stat which is really telling for Carmelo Anthony is he's shooting 50% from the three-point line. You know, every game you look at the box score, he's he's making at least half of his shots from the three-point line. And that has been the shot that has been really important for him because, you know, he's had to change his game so dramatically and to, to kind of become a spot-up shooter. And, you know, if you're not going to be playing defense 
on a Kawhi level, Kawhi Leonard level, you know, you need to be hitting your spot up shots. And, you know, Carmelo has been doing that. A lot of the games that they've won has been attributed to him shooting the ball really good late down the stretch. So Carmelo Anthony and his 50% three-point shooting, we don't know if he'll be able to keep that up. But with the weight loss and, you know, the rededication to the game, you know, as someone who's kind of re-evolving his game, you know, has been remarkable. And, you know, Carmelo Anthony deserves, for me, you know, the one who needs some sort of spotlight on him. And, you know, he's the reason why I I, I bought that jersey. I, I, I loved Carmelo when he was in Denver, when he put he pushed his way to New York. He was good still, but, you know, of course, the New York team and you know how how he played over there and you know the lack of success there was the phil jackson saga um it's exhausting (laughs) you know carmelo's career and then you know getting traded to um the oklahoma city thunder i'm a thunder fan you know anyone who knows me knows the oklahoma city are my team um and i've been that way since 2010 so no one's gonna say i've jumped any bandwagon even before they moved from seattle and then moved over to Oklahoma City full-time. I was an Oklahoma City fan. So when Carmelo was traded to the Oklahoma City Thunder and Paul George and Russ was there, I was like, yo, these these guys are going to be good. And he just flopped. He wasn't good. He couldn't fit in. Um, so, you know, that didn't work well for him. Got traded to, to Houston. And like people say, he just had a sip of coffee in Houston. Then he got waved by Daryl Morey, who thought that he just wasn't right for the team. And then because of those experiences, people unfairly blackballed him and didn't give an opportunity to, to, to play anymore in the league. But, you know, he's come out. Terry Stotts have, has given him, you know, on the Portland um, Trailblazers franchise gave him a chance and you know he's producing for them right now this is the reason why Carmelo Anthony was brought in to the players the, to the to the Blazers he's playing exceptionally well um, you know he needs to up those assist numbers a bit um, and you know get the, the points points up you know he's no longer 20 30 point scorer anymore but you know staying around that league average league, his regular season average of 15 points is going to be good for them, you know, and, you know, having Yusuf Nurkic back, of course, that takes the ball out of his hands a little bit. So you'd expect a little bit of a drop off in productivity for Carmelo there, but you know what, you know, I'm going to give him his props. I kind of wanted all Melo in the all-star game this year. I know that was a ridiculous thing to think, (laughs) but I thought after Adam Silver giving Dwayne Wade and Dirk Nowitzki last year, uh, uh, an opportunity to play in the All Star game last year. I figured, you know what, Carmelo might not get another ch- net a, another contract anymore, so he should be given a chance um, to play the All Star game for the, for the last time. And Vince Carter, I thought the both of them would be honorarily brought in for the All Star squads, but that didn't happen this year. So um, Carmelo Anthony, spotlight on him to here today on the Baseline to Baseline podcast. All right. So the next thing we like to kind of discuss are coaches in the bubble who are on the bubble, you know, coaches on the hot seat. Um, some teams, like we mentioned, the, the surprise teams that I, I, I called out earlier on, the Grizzlies, um, the Pelicans. It, oh, man, there's some, there's some teams who are just not performing really good right now. And I have three coaches here who legitimately could not be head coaches next year when when you know we we get into the next season the 2020 2021 season and alvin gentry boy he he he's in some serious trouble right now like i said they are now one and three in the bubble um his questionable um uh, dispersal of time or, or or scheduling of time for his players and especially zion zion williamson is going to be a key factor in whether he stays on um, as a coach for them next year. And, you know, he could say that he's probably been pushed by David Griffin, the GM, the vice president of basketball, basketball operations, um, that, you know, Blake, um, David Griffin is probably telling him, no, you need to rest Zion and whatever. But he, he his coaching has just not been up to, up to scratch. You know, his days as a seven second or less um savant from phoenix and you know uh, you know coaching those teams 
you know, to the playoffs and doing really good. You know, these names seem these days seem to be past Alvin Gentry. And whilst I like to see him with a fully healthy Zion, Zion Williamson for a full season, I don't know if he will survive the bubble. Um and this season and, and actually be a head coach, um, especially if Zion doesn't strike me as a guy who might be a coach killer and who might say, well, no, I don't want to play for him anymore. But Alvin Gentry could be in, in, in some problems here. Um, the next coach who is on my bubble hot seat is Luke Walton. <laughs> Luke Walton, from the time he came from the Golden State Warriors as an assistant coach, it was like a really lovely story. You know, he did a really good job. He had that season. I can't remember which one it was where he went 24-0 to start the season when Steve Kerr was out with some back injuries or whatever it was. His record was was a, almost a perfect record. And then, you know, off the back of the, that season, he got the Lakers head coaching job and his rotations were just inconsistent um, he at times didn't seem like he knew what he was doing. Um, and it kind of seems like it's carried on over to the Kings. And, you know, Vladi Divac, Divac um, who's now the, the GM or the vice president of, of basketball operations, um, and Vivek Ranadive, the owner, you know, they were really keen to poach him away from the Lakers um, towards the end of, of, of last season. Got the job. Many people wondered whether or not he deserved the job so quickly um, because even before he was out of the Lakers, you know, he was already being courted by the Kings. Um, whilst, you know, LeBron and, 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 and everyone else was trying to decide whether or not he should continue to be the coach for the Lakers. And Magic Johnson wanted him out. Um, he thought, you know, LeBron and an and, 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 and upgraded team would need a better coach. But they were still making deliberations on that. Genie Bus wasn't too sure. You know, he's a Laker guy, played for the Lakers, won championships for the Lakers. They wanted to keep him. Um, they thought he had potential, but his inconsistency and lack of wins has plagued him and has kind of traveled across to Sacramento as well. So um, the team has regressed from last season where they where they did really well. They were close to, to being in the playoffs. And of course, yeah, they're in the bubble. So they have an opportunity to win and get into that final eighth spot uh, in the bubble. But I just don't see them leapfrogging to, um, the Trailblazers or even San Antonio and the, even the Grizzlies with them being injured at the moment. Um, the Aaron Fox with his new hairdo, <laughs> you know, fresh cut. Um, looks like, you know, he's still one of the quickest guards in the league. Um, you know, he's not playing Buddy Heald really well. And Buddy Heald was a guy who last season was tops in the league, I think, in, in, in three-point shooting percentage, I think, or something. He was shooting and lights out. And Buddy Heald is now playing like 10 minutes a game or something. And he just got a, 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 a max contract or just under a max contract at the end of the off season. And he not getting playing time right now um, in favor of Bo Boyan Bogdanovic, who's also a really good player. Um, you know, it's it's still a bit puzzling to me. Um, Harry Giles Jr. doesn't seem to be getting much run. Marvin Bagley still injured. Uh, you know, this guy is plagued by injury as well. So he hasn't been able to get off um, the bench just yet due to injury. Um, and, you know... Luke Walton just, just can't seem to put it together. I'm sorry. I, I don't think he, he should or would survive um, into next season. But, you know, maybe they might, they might give him another chance. And, you know, it's been a disrupted season. It's been his first season with the Kings. So we'll see what happens. And the guy who definitely I don't think will be returning next year is Scott Brooks. Washington Wizards, you know, 0-4 in the bubble. Um, yeah, they're... they're they're not even competing for the eighth spot right now. They are out of the four games that they need to be within uh, with the eighth seed to be able to even be eligible for the play-in tournament, um, which is um, the eighth and ninth seed playing this play-in tournament and the ninth seed having the opportunity to win twice in a row to, to unseat the eighth seed for that playoff spot. And the Washington Wizards are just not competitive. It's just a mi mismatch of mix 
whatever the term is, a pick and mix <laughs> of um, you know players who are all just trying to prove their worth in the NBA and trying to earn contracts. Ish Smith has been really good. You know, he's been really solid off the bench. Um, you have um, Shabazz Napier, I think, who's, who's who's been playing really well as well, really solid, but he's not a starting ca- caliber point guard in the league. Um, we have John Wall and Bradley Beal who are not on the team um, as they continue to rehab and try to get better um, from the injuries um, they had suffered um, as the season progressed. Bradley Beal could have played this year, but the team is not good enough, so why even play? And I think that's the reason why he's not playing. Um, Thomas Bryant, good little role player, but should he be getting the amount of minutes that he's getting? I don't know. But Washington Wizards are not a destination. It's not a place where people will want to come and play. So... Uh, it's really difficult to see them getting players and competing. So, and and Scott Brooks just hasn't really done a good job. His his sets haven't really been as imaginative, and it's, you know it's the same criticism that has come from when he came from the Oklahoma City Thunder. He had really predictable sets as a head coach, and you know I think the Washington Wizards have suffered from a lack of inventive and innovative coaching from his part and not also having enough talent on that team. So the Washington Wizards and Scott Brooks, I think, could be looking for a new coach next season. So these are my three coaches on the bubble. We have Alvin Gentry, Luke Walton and Scott Brooks. Um, You know, and I'll kind of wrap up this podcast today. Like I said, you know, doing it on my own, but you know, this is the first time I'm doing something like this. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. And like I said, we're we're gonna move on with episodes. We're gonna jump into episode three um, at some point where we have a guest on. You know, talk some more about the, what's going on in the NBA so far and everything. So look look out for episode three coming up soon. Um, and if you haven't, like and subscribe to the baseline to baseline pages, which will be shown at the end in the outro where you could, you know, visit all the channels um, and, you know, like um, the pages and subscribe and, you know, just follow on with the conversation. We're just talking basketball. Hey man, it's, it's, it's nothing major, you know, it's just something that I love, you know, something that a lot of people love and we're just talking basketball. So one of the things I like to make do right now before we end off is just do a bit of a prediction. I think, um, but just the West, Western Conference AFC prediction. This is all I'm going to do right now. I'm not going to go into playoffs and who's going to win or anything. I want all the seeds to be confirmed first. And then in one of the episodes, subsequent episodes, when when that's all, you know, firmed up, you know, who's playing who and how the brackets are going to work out and I kind of give some sort of prediction. But um, I think the Western Conference AFC seed who will, you know, look for the right to play the Lakers in the first round of the playoffs, I think will be the Portland Trailblazers. I think Carmelo Anthony, um, you know, McCollum, Damian Lillard, Yusuf Nurkic has looked so good since he's been back. He's putting up ridiculous fantasy-like numbers. You know, there's one of the games he had, I can't even remember, it was like 27 points, 11 rebounds, six blocks, seven assists, or whatever it was. He's been playing really well. And I think having that team almost back to full strength Gary Trent Jr. has kind of stepped up in the absence of Trevor Ariza and playing that guard small forward sport really well and holding it down, you know, and kind of providing the defense and intensity that they need um, to, to kind of scrap their way into the playoffs. I think, I really do believe, you know, the Portland Trailblazers have everything they need to get past the Memphis Grizzlies, whether or not, whether it be outright where they become the eighth seed just by winning most of the games, you know, the, the last four games in the bubble, or whether or not they do this play in tournaments and have to play the Grizzlies, I think they can beat the Grizzlies two games straight, um, you know, to get in to that eighth spot and keep the streak of playoff appearances going for Damian Lillard and that team. And like I said, the rest of the playoffs, playoff predictions, I'll leave that till the end of these seeding games um I, I won't jump into that just yet we had kevin durant recently on a podcast saying he thinks the clippers will beat the bucks um in the finals and you know very interesting 
you know, Kevin Durant talks a lot when he's not playing, so <laughs> we don't know if he'll actually be right on that. But um, you know, he, he there's there was a lot of good points he raised there about you know who he how he thinks those teams will play and the depth of the Clippers and how good the Bucks are playing. So he thinks the Clippers will win. I hold my my thoughts on who will win for now. We'll just keep in touch on subsequent episodes. So like I said, like and like and subscribe. Baseline to Baseline podcast with Alistair Albert on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and you know, see what I think will happen later on. But for now, I'd like to say I'm signing off here for episode two. I went solo this time doing it on my own, but you know, hopefully episode three would have something else um, coming up. We, you know, we'll have some discussions with someone. We have a podcast that I have planned with, you know, a buddy of mine in Australia, which I hope will kind of come through we tentatively have an agreement for that um you know i think that one's going to be a really good one so you know look out for that and just if if you like basketball as much as i do especially in the uk because the uk has no kind of basketball culture as far as i'm concerned you know and you love the nba you know listen to me check out my you know the, the discussions that we'd have in the caribbean i know you guys love the bas- basketball just as much we have a lot of guys who've come out from the caribbean you know who've who, who are in the NBA or who have passed through the NBA or NCAA basketball, check me out, you know, leave your comments. You could agree or disagree with me with anything that I've said, you know, drop it in the comments. That's fine. We'll, we'll kind of talk things through in subsequent ep- episodes. But like I said, this is just episode two. I'm trying something out. The lighting, I'm not sure if it's kind of coming out really well. I hope the mic is, is, is a lot better. We're trying to figure things out. Uh, kind of change the paraphernalia behind me every now and then <laughs> to different jerseys and whatever so but like i say i'm signing off right now and i am alistair albert for the baseline to baseline podcast hope you enjoyed like and subscribe and we shall see again really really soon on episode three so signing out peace